Join us now on Flickr at flickr.com slash groups slash art of photography. Hey everybody, welcome back once again to the Art of Photography. I'm your host, Ted Forbes, and in this episode, we're going to talk a little bit about printing. And I realize this is not a subject that we've talked about before in this show, and I think it's a really important subject. I think that our generation of photographers, I mean, obviously the, the internet has been the biggest media sensation, if you will, a really cheesy term, but I, it, it's, it's been such a part of our lives that I think most of us get used to using Flickr, using our own websites, our own blogs, things like that. And I think one thing that photographers ignore a lot is actually printing a physical image and I think this is really important it's really important uh, just in your own growth as a photographer uh, in studying your own work uh, and also I think it's important for people to be able to see photography I think it's really a lot of fun and it's important to be able to do a show and have people come and see your work um, I've got four prints that you can see behind me sort of uh, these were all done for a show and I'm gonna talk a little bit about these and I'm gonna talk about some stuff that I've done at home these were actually done in a photo lab and uh, these were actually like I said proof prints that I did for a show and when you're gonna do prints there's basically two ways you can go. You can either print them at home in various methods. You can either use a dark room or you can use an inkjet printer, something like that, or you can send them out to a photo lab. Uh, these particular prints were done at a photo lab. I do both. I do some printing at home and I do some that I send lab out to a lab. Uh, the biggest difference for me between the two is size. And if they need to go big like this, these are actually the prints are actually about 14 inches by 14 inches or so, 14, 15, uh, and they're actually printed on 16 by 20 paper. And so uh, we'll get it, we'll do another episode on cropping and presentation and stuff like that, but I just wanted the entire image on there, so I just kind of had them print them in the middle of the image. But needless to say, 16 by 20 is the paper size, and that's not something that I'm capable of doing at home. You can buy printers that do that, uh, but generally they're more expensive because they're larger, they accommodate bigger paper sizes. And so for a job like that, I will send those out to a photo lab just because. Uh, you know whether you use somebody locally or whether you send them out to you know a company in New York or something like that uh, the price that you're gonna get per print uh, is makes much more sense to somebody like me uh, than spending several thousand dollars on a printer that's gonna be that size just because I don't print day-to-day -day that size so uh, but I do, do some work at home and that's kind of what I want to talk about a little bit there are companies like B&H, Adorama, uh, Adorama has got a really good facility for it uh, these are in the United States I believe there's some in Europe and England as well uh, that will do really nice prints for you and uh, they're totally worth the money to do. You don't have a lot of control when you send stuff out to a lab. I typically will include a proof print that I have made at home just so they get an idea of the tones and colors and, and they have something to base that on for accuracy. I'm going to do a separate show on this we'll get into in a minute but I want to give a good overview on this whole process. Uh, but let's talk about printing at home. Um, more or less the, the most common method that most people use is inkjet printing and you can also use darkroom if you have a darkroom set up. I do both. Uh, I don't think really there's a pro or a con over one of the other. I enjoy the darkroom because uh, you know I tend to be on a computer at work most of the day and I like to make something with my hands after a while and so darkroom for me is a very zen therapeutic kind of um, uh, you know, opposite to what I'm doing during the day on a computer. So that's just me personally. Um, there are a lot of fine art photographers that shoot inkjet or shoot and print out on the inkjet uh, paper, and there's nothing wrong with that. But more or less, you're going to need an inkjet printer for for uh, for the digital side of things. Um, and one thing I want to stress on here is there are a number of printers available in all kinds of price points and ranges. Uh, most printers are, are fairly affordable for the most part. That will do you know accommodate up to a you know eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper. The one that I have does that. Um, and and I will, here's the gotcha on printers is the ink is extremely expensive usually. So a lot of times you'll see printers that come out and they've got like, you know, nine colors of ink in there and stuff. Don't get caught up on that as a spec as much. Um, I think it's more important what kind of paper you're printing on and the resolution of the printer. You can always tweak color and kind of figure that out in the process. And so I think one of the specs, if you're interested in buying an inkjet printer to look at, uh, more so than how many ink cartridges it'll take because that ends up costing a lot of money. Uh, but the more important thing is line resolution and paper and I want to talk about paper a little bit and I've got some examples to show you here um, I, you know what you don't want to do is and you know I've, I've known photographers who do this they, they get really discouraged because they you know go up to their office and they shoot uh, you know a very large TIFF or Photoshop file over to the laser printer and it's got office paper in there which is just really crappy paper and it just doesn't look good it doesn't have the clarity it doesn't have the richness it doesn't have any depth and so the, the I think the more important investment uh, I have a hundred dollar printer let's just say I've got a Canon that, that is a very low-cost printer 
planner and it really sings when I have the right paper in there. And so what you want to do is look for papers specifically that are designed to be photo papers and they come in different finishes and things like that. I, you know, you can get glossy. I actually do not prefer glossy images and I'll show you some in a minute. I prefer a matte finish, uh, but there's satin finish, there's matte finish. You, you've got to kind of experiment and buy a couple things and see, you know, kind of where you want to start and what appeals to your taste and what your work looks the best on. Um, this is just a little cheap package of Ilford Printasia Premium Photo Pearl Paper. Okay, so it's a pearl paper. Uh, this is made by a company called Ilford, and Ilford are well known for, for their black and white film and photo papers, darkroom papers, and they do excellent, excellent products. They also sell inkjet papers, but don't be fooled, the inkjet will support color just as it does black and white. So the, the black and white only thing is kind of their, their analog, if you will, department. Uh, but anyway, uh, this is a premium photo pearl finish on here, and uh, this is a really good paper. This is something that I would recommend. This is a small photo size. There's a box. There's 104 by 6 um, basically prints that I can make on here. And I really recommend starting here because this is not going to cost you a lot of money. And you could probably order or go to the store and get two or three different kinds of these to see what the different finishes look like, the different qualities of paper, and make small prints. The really cool thing about you know digital inkjet printing is that there's enormous level of consistency between paper sizes which you don't have with darkroom stuff, and I'll get into that in a second. Um, but this is a really good way to go is just go get a couple small packages of small paper. You know, we're not printing exhibitions yet. You're learning what papers look like and what your work is going to look the best on. Then when you get a grasp on it, you'll realize that the larger papers, especially nice paper, cost more money. And so I think at that point, you would know what you're looking for and know how to step up. Uh, but anyway, these little 4x6s are great for that. Um, you know, paper comes in all kinds of shapes and sizes. And especially with inkjet printing, uh, there's a few more formats that are, are available. With darkroom printing, there's kind of some set traditional ones, and they don't always fit the exact aspect ratio of your camera. So you know, I've gotten some questions on that before, and we'll address that coming up. I want to show you another, um, probably my my favorite inkjet printer uh, paper, uh, which is made by a company called Hanamula. Or Hanamula. Um, I'm, I'm grossly mispronouncing that, so my German friends will will laugh accordingly. Uh, but anyway, this is an excellent, excellent, excellent paper. This is probably my favorite, and this one specifically. Uh, is an inkjet printer and it has, I'll show you what a print looks like on this. It, it, it almost looks like a page out of like a really nice book or something. Um, it's got a, a matte finish on it so it doesn't, doesn't shine. And this is the closest, and I'm going to talk about darkroom papers in a second. And the nice darkroom papers are what they call fiber based paper. And this is the closest cousin I found in the inkjet world. And I absolutely adore this paper. This isn't the greatest image in the world, but you can see that even with a dedicated color printer that I'm printing black and white on, the paper makes all the difference in the world. And uh, this is an excellent, excellent quality paper. It looks great uh, when it's framed, under glass, exhibition style, things like that. And it comes in a lot of sizes. So if you happen to do have a printer that's very large or a lab that you can specify the paper to, you can get this paper in those sizes. So anyway, this is uh, the, uh, the sticker on here says uh, this is a photo rag smooth surface. And there's also what you see as a GSM. And that basically denotes the weight of the paper. It's a very heavy weight paper. It's like a cover weight paper. And that's really important to me um, for prints. I, you know, I think it's arguable whether you know you have archival quality or in terms of longevity or something like that. But, but for me personally, I just like to print my work that way. I like heavy papers. I don't like glossy finish, um, but I like a really fine paper that has a nice tooth to it and a good rag. Um, so anyway, that kind of covers um, just a couple options. There are way more than this. You can get glossy papers. You can get the pearl finish. There's satin finish. There's all kinds of wonderful things you can get. Um, but let me talk about darkroom for a second. And with darkroom, uh, don't get confused, and I should probably do a dedicated episode where we get more into papers, but there are basically two flavors of paper that you can find for darkroom papers. There, and, uh, one of them is called resin-coated, and the other one is called fiber-based. So if you're dealing with resin-coated paper, these are prints that were made on resin-coated paper. It's a normal, it's a little bit heavier than what you'd find in an office that you'd print out on, uh, but it's a lightweight paper, relatively speaking. Uh, it has a really nice black and white contrast to it. This one's a glossy, so you can see it does shine. Um, my biggest beef with glossy, and this is just a personal opinion, so please do not take this as a fact or anything like that, um, but just for what I do, um, especially if you're going to put your prints under glass, I think the glossiness just distracts from my prints, I feel. And so I really don't like to print on. I do have glossy paper and I do some work on there, but this was of my nephew and watching television. Anyway, this is a glossy paper. This is a resin coated paper. The resin coated paper is very easy to work with. In contrast to that, these are both ADOX papers, a company called ADOX that makes these. This is a different 
type of Adox paper. This has got a um, got a satin finish on it, so you can see the glare isn't nearly as much as you'd get with a glossy. It's got a matte finish actually. And uh, anyway, it's a, it's got a lot of depth to it. It's a really great paper. Again, these are darkroom prints, so these were done with chemicals and enlarger. And I really feel like for my own black and white work, this is what looks best. Um, like you can see, I have printed stuff out bigger for shows before, and these are digital prints. I gave them a CD with some TIFF files on them. They went from there. So it just depends on what you're trying to do. Uh, but anyway, this is resin coated paper. It's really easy to work with. You can see it has a little bit of curl to it. I printed these last night, so they're dry now, but it's got a little bit of curl, but it's really easy to flatten if you're framing it. Um, contrast to that, the other type of darkroom paper is what's known as a fiber-based. And this is real similar to that Hanamul rag that I was showing you. Uh, and you can see that this is printed on a fiber-based paper. It's a much um, tougher paper. Um, this is an Ilford uh, warm tone, and this is one of my favorite darkroom papers. Uh, it's not real cheap, um, so I kind of use it conservatively. But uh, you can see that right off the bat that this photo is awfully crinkled, and this is one of the problems that you deal with with fiber-based papers, getting prints to stay flat. Uh, there are ways to press these. You can leave them under some books for a week. This is a recent print, so I haven't done anything to it other than kind of keep it uh, in a box in a safe place. But anyway, um, but what I really like about the fiber-based papers as opposed to the resin coated, and again, this is a very personal opinion, and this is just my feeling on it, but I really feel like um, when you're printing on resin coated papers that the image is just kind of there. And then when you're dealing with fiber based or, or like the, um, uh, you know, that, that, that Hanamul that I was just showing you, it's like almost like you get this 3D, you're looking into the image. And I know this is a little strange sounding, but that's just me. Uh, but the side effect is, is that it curls heavily. And so it's a little, you need to leave it under some books, try to get it flat. And so it's a little more difficult to frame. But once you do, um, you can see, and we'll do a whole episode on framing too. Uh, that they look really nice. This is a pinhole image. Uh, it was a large format image that I took uh, of an Ellsworth Kelly sculpture uh, in a museum, in a sculpture garden. And I, I really love that the, I don't know if it picks up on the video and you're probably getting a little glare too, but, but uh, you know, it just has this three dimensional quality to it. You're really looking into the photograph. And that's the difference for me um, in darker papers uh, between uh, the, the resin coated and the fiber based. It just, in the warm tones, it's just phenomenal. Uh, I really am happy with, with buying this paper. And if I'm gonna be on the ink jet side, the Hanamula works fine. Color looks really good on the Hanamula also. Uh, but like I said, your mileage may vary and you may decide that your work doesn't look good on that, that you really like glossy papers and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but find the paper that's right for you. And again, like I said, just find some smaller papers that you can experiment with. If you have a darkroom setup, you can do the same thing. You can buy the smaller papers. You have less consistency from batch to batch with darkroom stuff. It's just, it, they're not as mass produced as they used to be and they're starting to become some flaws in the paper and things like that. It's not the end of the world, it's not terrible. But generally, um, if I know a darkroom time for, for a sheet of paper, I will check it when I open a new box just because it may be slightly different. Um, and we'll talk about framing too. Um, I tend to prefer these, these natural wood frames and there's a whole thing that I can get into on that as well. But I wanted to get you started today. If you have an inkjet printer at home, by all means, start experimenting and experiment with the papers. Make sure you have enough ink in there, but don't get caught up in, in, uh, in, in the printer stats. Uh, like I said, I've got a $100 printer. It's good enough. Um, and I think that's really important. So anyway, so get experimenting, print some of your work, and um, I'll see you next time. We'll talk more specifically about presentation and stuff like that. So once again, this has been The Art of Photography, and thank you for watching.